their sins. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion. Sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of Yahuwah, Yahweh, is at hand. Your mouth is a trumpet. Blow ye the shofar. Amen. Turn the music on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah.
You did it all just for me. Just for me. And he did it all just for you. And all he asked you to do was to worship him. He says, worship me. Worship me. And sometimes we wonder what that word really means. Because there are times when we go to prayer, prayer and worship service. And sometimes we spend a lot of time, hallelujah, we pray. And always in that prayer is also worship. Worship is talking to your Father. Worship is acknowledging that the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God who created heaven and the earth and the sea, he is the one that we are to worship. He has demonstrated in the book of Daniel with Nebuchadnezzar Father has demonstrated that he works in the heart of man, of, of those that are not seeking him. And Father wanted to get Nebuchadnezzar's attention, hallelujah, and to let him know that the God of Israel works in the lives of the righteous and he's also working in the lives of the wicked to destroy the wicked works of the enemy, Nebuchadnezzar. You know, he had a dream. I'm just going to move from point to point or different examples. Nebuchadnezzar had a dream, and Daniel interpreted that dream and all of that, that uh, the, what would happen to his kingdom and what would happen with him. And then you know what happened. He, he, uh, he had used some of Father's golden uh, utensils and everything. We'll put it that way. But when Father did something in life with Nebuchadnezzar, he turned him out so that he became like an animal. There was, there was conflict. Like some of you, you have conflict because you don't believe that the God of Israel is working in your life. And remember, Nebuchadnezzar was, was, was turned out and his fingernails nails grew. And when he came back to himself, or when Father brought him back to himself, he said, the God of Israel, he is the God. This is the God you worship. Hallelujah. Messiah said in John, salvation is of the Hebrews. And he, Father, is looking for worshipers, those that would worship him in spirit and in truth. When the presence of our God is upon us or upon you, you can feel the difference. You raise your hand. Some people begin to sing, Oh God, how great thou art. How wonderful and fearfully you have made us. Hallelujah. And we look everywhere. We look in the, in the scripture when that woman with her son, that her only son had died, and Messiah showed up and, and brought her son back to life. Who would not worship a God that could bring somebody back to life that you didn't know you didn't know he was going to do that we worship and even in your prayers when you say bless the God who made me even in Acts the people were serving an unknown God and Paul said the one that that unknown God he's the one that is the one that we are to worship hallelujah when when Abraham now, you know, this is, I, I was studying some things about Abraham and the, the, how he was born. This is not in, in uh, our regular scripture. But showing the, 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 what happened to these people, excuse me, that are different. When Abraham was born, or before Abraham was born, the, uh, Nimrod was having the boy children killed, just like it happened, you know, in Egypt. He was having the boy children killed killed because they had read in the stars that somebody was going to come and do a mighty work. And that someone was Abraham. And so the mother was pregnant, hallelujah, with Abraham, right? And so 
she was scared to tell Tara because T E R A H because Tara worked for Nimrod. So he was in his in, in, employee. He was an employee in, in, and Nimrod was his employee or his king, his God. That's who Nimrod was to Abraham's father. And so therefore Abraham's mom is pregnant and she can't tell her husband because her husband would run and tell. You don't keep things from the, your God. You tell your God. And so she knew if I tell my husband, he's going to go and tell our God or the king, and then he's going to de destroy my baby. And so she kept it to herself. But Tara, the husband came around, and he said he saw that she was looking kind of strange and different. So he said, what ails you? This I'm paraphrasing. What ails you? And she said, it's just the way uh, um, I just feel like this sometimes. So she didn't tell him. And so he reached forth his hand to his wife to feel her because he could see she looked kind of swollen a little bit, we'll say that way. So when he reached toward his hand to see, to feel her stomach, we will say, it didn't say that where I read it, but I'm going this route, to feel her stomach. Because he could tell if she was pregnant. And so the baby went up under her breastbone so that when he felt, he felt nothing. So Abraham was hid up under his mama's breastbone. And so therefore, you know this happens in real life. People say, I didn't know I was pregnant. Nobody knew I was pregnant because that baby hid. Because if you, well, you know that's got to do with the God of Israel. Who wouldn't want to worship him? Now listen, this is what, it, what this, the way the story goes is that the mother, when her time came, you know, you're pregnant for nine months, but you know there are issues and things that happen, and sometimes the baby get here ahead of time. Well, she was also due, she knew she was due in nine months, but the, her pains came up on her when she was six months pregnant. So she, she left her husband, you know, she didn't leave her husband, you know, left like left, but she had to sneak out or go out, and she found a place in the cave. And that's where Abraham was born, in the cave. And they say when Abraham was born, this still has to do with worshiping the God of Israel. They say when Abraham was born, he said that the cave just lit up with light. And so the woman couldn't stay there to nurse her baby. So she had to leave that baby in that cave. And she said, I, I leave it into the hands of, of I, I don't know what she said. I think it was in the hand of the one who made him. I can't remember exactly what the woman said. Whatever it was, my impression was she was talking about the God of Israel. And she trusted the God of Israel to take care. And so she left the cave and left that little naked crying baby in there. Well, I'm saying naked crying baby in there. And so baby had no milk, right? No mama did breastfeed it. So the angel Gabriel, we understand, you can, this is the story, came down and caused milk to come from the small finger of Abraham and as he nursed. Now he's, he's like um, 10... Well, he not, he's going on anyway, somewhere between 10 days old. Well, when he got through nursing from that finger, then it says he walked out of the cave. Now, look, he's 10 days old. How in the world can you walk out of a cave? But it says this baby walked out of the cave. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wind this story up real fast here. And we just say some days later, the mama was looking for her child. And when the child was growing real fast, and somewhere the story says it was 20 days. Now, I don't know how big the child was, but this is a story. And you will find it in the legend of the Jews. If you want to find it, you go there and look for that story about Abraham and his birth. Hallelujah. And so here Abraham was declaring who the God of Israel is when he's a still supposedly a baby. He was proclaiming the God of Israel. And so who would you worship? And let's just wind this story up fast and say, Terah found out about this child. I've forgotten how he did it, but he found out about this child. So he went running to his employer, to his God, who is Nimrod, and told Nimrod, well, of course, shutting in the story, Nimrod, you know, they brought Abraham in to them. And, of course, Nimrod wanted to kill him, wanted to burn him up and all of that. And every time he would go, the fire, the fire would burn the people up that was trying to throw Abraham in. Now, this still has to do with worship. Messiah said, those that worship our God, worship him in spirit and in truth. 
Abraham been watching those gods that his father had made because they were they were they were they were they were worshiping these gods, and he gave um, Abraham some uh, some gods to sell, and 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 Abraham they say Abraham took an axe and all that kind of stuff and 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 beat and hacked the things and do, did whatever he does and then took the biggest God that they had made and put the axe in his hand. And, and dad was upset about his, all his uh, gods. And Abraham said, the big God over there, he destroyed all them gods. Well, you know his father knew them things, couldn't do anything. So who would you worship if somebody could save your life and sent an angel to feed you? And every time they tried to do something to Abraham, Gabriel would show up. And sometimes he would show up in the form of a man. Uh, and, 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 and vote on behalf of Abraham, whatever was going on. But Satan was always showing up too because they tried to throw Abraham in some place. I've forgotten what it was. But they tried to throw him, and it didn't work. So the devil showed up and told Nimrod, why don't you just counterpoint or do a thing and, and throw him that way? In the, oh, I know what it was. When the men would go to try to throw Abraham in the fire, the men would get burned up. So the devil said to Nimrod, why don't you counter put him in there? That way nobody will, will get burned up. So they did that. And then, you know the fire went out and whatever it is that that <laughs> that that hit or whatever, I can't remember. But the tr the tree or the stumps or whatever was started budding and flowering and and he was sitting in a pleasant place. I hope you're following this. So who would not want to worship? And now let me tell you something. I understand now why People don't want you to read any, any outside reading because it helps your faith to expand. Worship. Hallelujah. That um, the healing, when you are healed, you say thank you. If your friend does something and you have a flat tire on the road and you couldn't get anybody else, you called your friend. And your friend showed up and helped you uh, change your flat tire. Aren't you going to be thanking your friend? You know how you feel toward your friend. You don't worship your friend, but you know your heart feels so good. This father says, that's when I want you to praise me. I sent the friend. So you bless your friend and, 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 and praise him for the good work he done, but give the awesomeness of that praise unto me. And that's why father said, worship me. Because in the worship, it says the healing takes place. In the, in the worship, there is peace. In the worship, we understand when we've been in conflict. And y'all heard all the story, Hannah and Elizabeth and all these people that we keep naming in the scripture. They had to go through something in order to say, our God, I worship you. I know you're real. When Jacob, hallelujah, came to that place, I've forgotten, I, I don't, I've forgotten the whole story of that. But you remember we always talk about Jacob and the ladder. And Jacob came to a place and the presence of father was there. And he said, this place is terrible. They used to say that all the time because they were scared. Because they knew the awesomeness of our God. You just don't play with that fire. It is awesome when you're in his presence. And he saw that ladder leading up to heaven. And up at the top of it, he saw our father. And that's what I'm saying. He saw the father and the angels going up and down, up and down. So he set up a stone to mark that place because he was worshiping the God of Israel because the God of Israel always work on behalf of his children that do righteousness. That whole book is about righteousness. It's about our father. It's about his son. It's about him dying so that we could have a right to the tree of life. It's about your birthright. A birthright, a person that has a birthright has a right to the heritage of Jacob. Hallelujah. And so we worship this living king. And so I, and, and dad know this, where I do with these banners is I'll be worshiping our father. Hallelujah. When those, uh, when we thank you, father, and we bless you and we praise you for the, the worship and the praise. You worship him through praise. You worship him through dance. You worship him through singing. You worship him through cleaning up your house. It's a worship. I don't care what people say. You can worship him. You can worship him through cooking your food and, and preparing it in the right way because you love him. You're going to do the best you can for that food because nobody's in that kitchen but you. 
So you know you have to prepare this food right because if you do something wrong in that food, what you do wrong in that food, somebody going to do something wrong in your food. So if you pick it up stuff and put it in food and giving it to us, then somebody going to do that same thing to you because the Father say you reap what you sow. That's why we worship our God. That's why when people are out of our sight, we have to let Father take care of. They're going to talk. They're going to talk about you. They're going to run you down. They're going to talk all kinds of things. But the God of Israel is on the scene. Hallelujah. He never, ever forsakes us or leaves us. And so we lift our hands. And, and a lot of times, you know, you may not see Dad with no flags up in the air doing all of this, but Dad worships Father by helping with the program. The people that help with the program, who do you think they're worshiping? They worship in the God of Israel because if they would, if they are not worshiping the God of Israel, they would not touch this program at all because I know that Father is here and I know that Father is in many programs on this public access system and they are not all preaching. Some are bringing you information that's going to help you live a better life. That's their preaching. They may tell you how to brush your teeth. That's their preaching because it's to help you, and we worship the God of Israel. That's why I thank him for, I'm always there for doctors and nurses that he has chosen to help us. All doctors and nurses aren't right. All police officers are not right. Everybody that say they are Hebrew is not right. But those that are right, Father, bring them and have them help us. So I praise our Father for the what do you say, for the fire department. Look at how when the siren goes, when the siren go off and the house is on fire, we dial a number and call the fire department. Hallelujah. And they come and they save. They didn't ask you about your religion. They didn't ask you about your color. They didn't ask you about none of that. I'm talking about those that are about their job that Father has called them to be. You may say, this is not a worship. This yes, it is. Everything you do during the day, Give honor unto the king that you, that you serve, whoever he may be. If it's the devil, you just going to serve the devil as hard as you can with everything you have. But these people, the fire department, the sanitation department, that's why we worship our God. Some to go home with some people's cesspools that they have, you call somebody so that they will show up to help you. That's how great our God is. And sometimes people say, well, you, people are always talking about Scripture. Don't you know everything has to do with the Scripture? The grass that you walk on, it has to do with the Word. It has to do with the God of Israel that said to you, now listen to this. You've got to listen. Father said, I can take a desert and turn it into a pool of water. Look at this. You know, you know how that water, and sometimes the water just kind of ripples a little bit. Just kind of ripples a little bit. You know how it does like that, right? Right, just kind of ripples a little bit. Father said, I can take a desert and turn it into a pool of water. Wouldn't you want to serve this kind of God? I can take a dry wound and I can put a baby in there. And I can fix that baby up so it can look just like his mom and daddy. Wouldn't you want to wouldn't you want to work for that kind of God and worship him? And when he tells said, let the sun and the stars and the moon, let them worship. Let the ice and the snow and the sleep because there are angels attached to all of these things. And so the angels are worshiping the king. They don't have no problems in worshiping the king. What about you? We worship him. That's why you see we take these banners and we worship. We say, Father, we worship you with it. We worship you. Only you can make this work. Only you can make this beautiful. You can dry all the things up that we do and make it like nothing. But with your touch, it just shines and glows. That's what happens because of the great king. The great king that can make the sun, the, the moon stand still or the sun stand still. This is the one that speak a word and your cancer dry up. I don't care. Well, it does happen, you all. I know some of you don't believe it, but it's true. God can keep us and sustain us. That's how great he is. And his word never, never returns unto him void. I'm going to say it again. If he can take a desert place and turn it into a pool of water, 
If he could say to you, the water the, can come up to your ankles and up to your neck, but the water will never overflow you. Believe him. Believe what he's saying to us. You have Abraham born in that cave with a light everywhere. You have Noah. When he was born, there was a light everywhere. You know when Messiah was born, they said there was a special star. They was looking, there was light. When you were born, don't you know something was going on just for you? That father had a plan just for you. He wants to do a good thing by you. He wants to prosper you, and it is the truth, you all. Hallelujah. He made you. He would, we could say, he went down in the, in the earth, and he began to put all your pieces together, all the substance in you is what I'm saying. He gave you your talents. He gave you everything. Again, wouldn't you want to serve this God that can take a desert and turn it into a pool of water? Don't you want to serve this God, hallelujah, that pay all your bills and heal you? Don't you want to serve a God that reconcile you and take away all your pain? What if you couldn't make it to your mother's funeral? What if you couldn't make it to your father's funeral? Or your, or your sister, your brother, or your son, or your daughter. Father takes care of all of that. He got it all. He paid for it. So we worship him. We worship him with music. We worship him with truth. We worship him. And I'm glad you tune in. Remember, whatever you do, if it's taking your hands and, and holding it up to the God of Israel, and you may not say it like I do, but you can say, I want the real God, the God of Israel, I bless the God of Israel. Hallelujah. For he is the God. So you would say it like Paul told them, that unknown God. I declare that he is God. Nebuchadnezzar said, Daniel's God. He is God. Abraham said, why y'all fooling around with them idols? Why don't you serve the real living God who have eyes that he can see you and ears that he can hear you? Hallelujah. Worship our God. Worship our God. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you all for tuning in. Tune in next week so we can make another connection. Thank you for being patient with us. And I thank our Father for blessing you. And if you believe this, some miracle is going to happen in your life. If you believe me, if you believe that I'm doing what Father called me to do, claim what he's telling you to claim and be bold about it. And tune in again next week. Thank you. Hallelujah. He can take a desert and turn it into a pool. He can take a pool and turn it. Such to unfold.